Good for the next session in the Ushahidi Ushaida room and I welcome Till Adams from Mundialis and Hinrich Paulsen who will tell us about Hermosa. Hinrich and Till are well known in the Ushtu community and they are the co-founder from Terrestris and Mundialis and we are hearing now from Hinrich about the Hermosa project. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Phosphor G um, in Argentina. My name is Hinrich Paulsen, and I will present this talk uh, together with my business partner, Till Adams, who won't be speaking today. And I will be talking to you about Hermosa, the holistic um, ecosystem restoration, monitoring, reporting, sharing marketplace application, which supports the UN decade on ecosystem restoration utilizing geo and earth observation technologies. Just to give you a quick introduction who we are, we are from the company Mundialis. We founded it together. Actinia is um, the geoprocessing engine based on GRASS-GIS. It is um, accessible uh, through the REST API that GRASS-GIS um, has available. And um, we use it for the processing of the Earth observation data that we're using in the project. Now, the problem is quite simple. The world is burning, literally. Many of you know the um, examples from Australia, from the United States and other parts of the world. And the climate is changing. There is either too little water in places or there is too much. This is a picture that was taken recently here in July, um, about 30 kilometers away from where I'm speaking now. And um, the damages are incredible. Um, also, because of the changing climate, the, uh, the damages caused by hurricanes and strong winds are incredible, and humankind is engaged in unsustainable practices, destroying ecosystems. Now, about two years ago, on the 1st of March 2019, the United Nations declared 2021 to 2030 the Decade on Ecosystem Restoration. So one of the important things is that ecosystems are being restored in such a fashion that we try and mitigate the effects of climate change. And the German contribution to ESA by our the German Space Agency, DLR, um, Mundialis was awarded a contract uh, for a two-year project um, to help with Earth observation data and um, geoprocessing to quantify the effects of the uh, restoration processes. Now, Hermosa, I already mentioned, is a web-based application and it is easily accessible through HTTPS hermosa.earth. Anybody can register there. And the important thing is that we tried to identify the tasks that everybody um, is doing when it comes to ecosystem restoration. So the first component of this application is what we call the identify and connect module. Then there is the organize and implement module where we utilize geographical information systems to 
uh, support the restoration process. Then there's the third module called Monitor and Report, which utilizes Earth observation data in various forms to provide the transparency and the verification of action on the ground. And last but not least, there is our Learn and Share module where you can talk about success stories and communicate about your projects. So the Identify and Connect module is where the different stakeholders, which can be the NGOs, um, planting organizations, um, uh, local communities, universities, bankers, all sorts of stakeholders where they identify each other and connect to set up a project. And for this reason, we have a web-based uh, mapping application where everybody is able to create their own projects after they have registered. The, um, the projects then show up on the map as indicated by the red arrows. And there is a search functionality so that you can look for geographical regions, you can look for names, you can look for all sorts of um, things that you can enter into this search bar. Um, then there is this button to create projects uh, yourself. And once you have done that, you are able to enter the data of the project so that it can then be found by the other stakeholders who might be interested in, in collaborating with you. As soon as you've done that, you can upload pictures, videos, and other media to support the description of your project. And then as a third step, you can start inviting people to join your project because you obviously are also in the position to search the platform and look for collaborators that you're missing in your consortium. Now, once the consortium has formed, we have the second module, Organize and Implement, which will support the implementation process and is quite easily done because you can upload your own geodata um, to identify and indicate where the project is located. You can obviously manipulate, you can change the geodata that you've uploaded um, through the use of Geostyler in this case and um, make it easily available for others. Now, Hamasa also comes with a bunch of data sets, global data sets mostly, but they can also be local. Uh, for example, a digital elevation model is available for the whole world. We have the land use and land cover data set in the application, and we have soil types, just to give you a few examples of what is available in the system and they can be used for the purposes that the project needs. Now, once the project has been implemented on the ground, everybody, the stakeholders, the consortium, they want to know how good the project is doing. So for this, we have the third module, which we call monitor and report, and which uses the latest in um, earth observation data and earth observation processing um, to provide the transparency and the verification of what is happening on the ground. So one element that is in here that you can create your own training data for earth observation data classification. So you might go into QGIS and because you have knowledge on the ground, you create your own training data which you can then upload to the system. And once the data has been uploaded to the system, you just identify the region that you would like to classify. And in the next step, you would define two points in time. So you would classify, in this example, July of 2019 with this training data. And in a second step, you would take July of 2020 to classify the uh, data from, from this year. And after you have classified both 
um, data sets, a result would look like shown in this slide. And then obviously, because you have the classification from two points in time, you can do what we call change detection or what is known as change detection. And then you can detect the change and you can see what is going on on the ground. Now, the example here was Sentinel-2. We also have um, Landsat um, already in the system. We're still working on integrating it fully and improving the system, um, but Landsat is there. And um, Sentinel-1 is also available. And as you can see in this example, the classification of this radar data is quite difficult to interpret. So we have um, in included a mechanism to make it more easily interpretable. So in this instance, you will see where most of the change has taken place and to support the user in the interpretation of this data. The next step is that the high resolution data is sometimes not detailed enough. So we have an API in the in Hermosa, which grants access to very high resolution data. So this is commercial data with a resolution that goes down to 0 0.5 meters. And as you can see in the image I'm displaying here, if you zoom in to Sentinel-2, and I'm displaying Sentinel-2 data with a spatial resolution of 10 meters, you see that it's quite blurred and that it you can't really see much and can't identify really what, what you're seeing there in this image. So you can easily use the mechanism that we were providing in Hamosa. You open the bounding box and you request very high resolution data from appropriate uh, commercial providers. And the result looks like this. So from the comfort of your office, from your desktop, you can easily access also the remote areas, which are under normal circumstances very difficult to, to get to. A lot of people in the field are using drones, but they come with the problem that you actually have to send a team there to fly the drone, to manage the data. Um, most of the people are fighting with large data volumes and so on. And all of this can be um, circumvented here in the Hermosa platform because we have this very comfortable API. Now, the fourth module, which we call Learn and Share, uh, we have implemented it for the simple reason that most projects are quite similar in nature. So if you're trying to restore an area, you want to plant trees, then other people who also want to plant trees, they have very similar problems. So it makes a lot of sense to share the experience and the best practice that you have experienced during your um, project and that you can easily share this with other projects and other people. So we have the possibility to uh, create what we call blog posts. So you can write uh, documents, you can upload media, you can uh, write little how-tos, you can provide PDFs, all sorts of documents for the benefit of other people. And as you can see here in this image, um, pictures are there. You're not limited to the uh, kind of topics that you can address. It can be restoration, it can be data management, it can be the creation of business plans, it can be just about anything that you can think of. And they are connected to the projects, so you will find appropriate comments in the geographical regions that you are interested in. And the current status of the Hermosa project is quite simple. It is ready to use, and as I mentioned earlier, and you will find it also in the slides, you can access the platform um, through hermosa.earth. Um, you can register and you can use it, 
but we're obviously still improving functionality and usability over time. And Hermosa is based on free and open source software and international standards. And we aim this project to be open and inclusive. So if you are interested in collaborating on, um, on the technology and putting it to use in, in your region, in your area, you're most welcome to contact us. And um, for more information, you can also visit hermosa.mundialis.de to, um, to gain more information and to get in contact with us. And with this, I close. And thank you very much for your attention and would love to answer your questions if you have any. Thank you very much. Yes, thanks a lot to Hinrich for the great presentation and the introduction to Hermosa. It was very impressive to see this program and to see the global use which, which it offers. So till you are here now for questions and we have a question in the chat. So the question is, what kind of commercial data is available within Hermosa? Uh, that's quite easy question to answer. We uh, implemented uh, API connection to up 42 data. This, so this is a data that uh, Henrich uh, spoke about when we spoke about the high resolution data. Mm -hmm. And is there a plan to add more commercial data or? Uh, probably the, the point is the technique is, is not the problem. Uh, so uh, proprietary data provider normally offer an API where you can get the data from. Uh, the point is in the moment we are in the stage of, um, of getting the platform into, into a kind of business model and, and uh, get it really in use and um, uh, putting in more effort and more interfaces to other um, proprietary data is of course also a matter of success of the platform. Um, so that's the point and that's, by the way, really an in interesting experience for us at, at Mondialis uh, because uh, normally we are, our business is more based on a uh, yeah, project uh, based uh, and not running a, a platform like, like this. So that's kind of interesting how this will perform. <laughs> okay. We're going to see. <laughs> like a, a new approach right? yeah it's like kind of, of new new approach new idea as Henry said in the in the talk we, we had the, uh, the luck that uh, is a supported uh, partwise must say partwise the development um, of the of the whole platform mm 